Okay, in this video I'm going to go ahead and give you a, a real uh, quick startup on the Keyray 3. Um, as you can see the instrument is in the off position. I wanted to kind of uh, just go through the basics of the, the Keyray 3 so you can see it. Uh, Keyray 3 has two buttons. You have a yes uh, plus key over here and you have a mode key. I'm sorry, yes plus key over here and a mode key over here. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and turn it on by pushing and holding the mode key. Again, nothing's new there. You can see Ray systems, the horns, lights, and vibrator do vibrate and give you an alarm. This is a pump unit, so you will be hearing the, the pump activate, and you'll hear it running. And one thing you'll see here that's different than the Q-Ray 2s, if you're used to Q-Ray 2s, uh, the Q-Ray 2 had a very quick, fast startup. Uh, this one's not bad, but it does take about 60 seconds, so it's going to count down. You can see on the screen, counting down uh, 60 seconds. While we're waiting, I'll show you the, the, the sensor ports. Sensor ports are one, two, three, and four. Exit port here for the pump unit. This is the entry in. This is where we're going to be coming in. Once again, you can see the traditional ray systems, water trap, dust filter up here. That's the same filter we use with our multi-ray, multi-pros, um, all the ray systems units you've learned, known to love over the years. So that same filter is the same. So that's a good thing. If you have a mixed fleet of other instruments using of Ray systems, that same filter can be used on all. So that's a great thing. Um, the the pump unit has uh, and diffusion units have capacity for four sensors, like I showed you here. Uh, LEL O2, COH2S, then you have also now HCN and SO2. So combinations of those can be purchased. Um, so we can uh, we can help you with that if you have any questions. Um, what you'll see here, I have this unit programmed to actually ask for a fresh air calibrate. I like using this feature. This is something that's been retained in, from all the other series. And at this point, it's asking you a question. Are you in a safe, clean, fresh air environment? That's what you have to be asking yourself. Um, it is good to do a fresh air periodically, but it's not good to do fresh airs in a contaminated area. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to look around. We're going to say yes or not. No, I'm going to go ahead and hit start. And I'm acknowledging that I do want to do a fresh air. So right now, it's going through its fresh air and it counts down from 30 seconds and it's going to take this area that I'm standing here and use that as my zero point. Now obviously we're waiting here 30 seconds but what if we said yes and it was a contaminated area? Um, that's not necessarily the best thing. So a lot of companies don't want you to do this fresh air. However, I would argue that it's very important to do fresh airs periodically. No, you don't want to do it if it's contaminated but certainly if there is an issue um, or there is no issue and you can do a fresh air, it's much better for the sensors once in a while to have a fresh air baseline. Okay. All right, after the 30 seconds are up, you can see the four sensors on the screen. It's a quadrants, one, two, three, and four. Um, the display is very nice on this. You can see it very easily, and you can see that it's showing all the four different gas sensors. In this case, you can see LEL, O2, H2S, and CO. Okay, and it's showing me my zero passed as well. So I'm going to hit the yes key. And now I'm showing my four gas sensors. Okay, so that is new. That kind of kind of surprised me there. It does show you that it did pass, which is a nice thing instead of going right into operation. A couple things you'll see: the little check mark means that it, we've passed the cal and bump uh, criteria dates. You can actually load this instrument up with dates to either force or just suggest calibration or bumping. Okay. We found out that if we set it for mandatory bump or cal, it will lock the instrument out until you successfully do a bump or a cal. Um, sometimes you can just set it up for suggestion. That check mark just says we've met the, the requirements. Also in the upper right hand corner, or left hand corner of the instrument, but right hand corner as you're looking at it, you'll see the same logos and, and, and pictograms we used for the other series, Q-Ray 2 and Multi-Ray series. You will see uh, the first one is your pump should be spinning. Second one is a, a little floppy disk um, that just shows you that your data logger is engaged. And you have the next one is your battery. A battery meaning if it's solid, means your battery's full. And as it depletes, that battery will start to drop. Okay. To see your peak readings, all we have to do is um, go ahead and hit the mode key. And you can see my, dis my display turned to peak. So to give you the highest readings of your gas sensor since you've turned it on. Now this gets reset when you turn the unit off and turn back on. However, the data logger does record that. It does not, is not affected by turning it on and turning it off. So hitting again, you will see the minimums. It's a minimum, the lowest level. 
STAL, short-term exposure limit, that's the highest 15-minute time period. Time-weighted averages, straight eight-hour dose over time concentration. Daytime temperature. Battery life, voltage, and how much percent is remaining of the battery. Runtime, wireless information. If you have a wireless enabled, you've got PAN ID and some other things unique for the wireless. That's right. This Keyray 3 does have wireless capabilities. It's the first uh, four gas meter, uh, basic personal meter that can go on a wireless network like Ray Systems Area Array and ProRay Guardian. Internally, there is uh, correction factors. I believe it's 50 different correction factors internal. So if you're not using methane, in this case, we have it set for methane. You can actually put in the correction factor from the library, and then that'll auto-correct when you're in the field. So you're working in a propane uh, gas plant. Uh, you can have it set up for reading in propane and not have to do the math on the correction factor all the time. Communication mode, that's something we've retained over the years from Ray Systems. So if you're familiar with that, it's the same here. We'd, we'd say yes to this screen using the yes key and then hook up to the PC, and that would be where we would then download the data or configuration of the unit. And then back around again. The backlight could be activated by a photo cell. As you notice, I put my hand over the bottom, the backlight came on. So the photo cell is down here. It can also be activated and programmed to be activated by using any push of a button. I'm going to scroll around to the beginning and go ahead and, and activate that backlight again by just covering up the bottom of the unit. Very cool. On the back side, you'll see the area where we can change the batteries out. Two screws, battery pack comes out. Once we do that, we don't get into the instrument, it's just the battery pack. There's a re rechargeable batteries, 14 hours on diffusion, 11 hours on uh, pumped, slightly less with the wireless option. Alligator clip for clipping to your, your clothing or your coat, and a nice D-ring that we've had over for years. Thin, a little thinner profile than the uh, Q-Ray 2. A little bit longer than the Q-Ray 2 because we have now, we have the um, pump at the top of the unit. Let me pan out a little bit there. So the pump is now at the top, not on the front. So it's a little longer than the Q-Ray 2, but a little bit thinner. Okay. Like all units, we definitely want to do periodic flow check. We want to make sure that the pump is pulling at the right rate. The easiest, quickest way is to use a flow meter. I'm going to go ahead and hook up the flow meter and show you that we are getting good flow. The ball is way above half a liter per minute. Whenever you deploy a pumped unit, you should always, always, always go ahead and bog the pump down with your finger. Clear the obstruction, hit the S key, clears you. To shut the unit off, we're going to go ahead and hold the mode key down. One, two, three, four, five. It's actually five seconds. I didn't hold it down hard enough, but there you go. Unit shutting off. That's so you don't inadvertently shut it off just by one button push. Okay, I just wanted to give you a real quick um, close up view of the Key Ray 3 and some of its functionality. Jim Sinesco, AFC International. If you have any questions, give us a call, 800-952-3293, or look us up on the Internet at www.afcintl.com. Thank you for watching, and give us a shout if you have any questions. Thank you.